Hello. Welcome back. As fall is sort of progressing into winter here in northern Wisconsin, I've been thinking a lot about the way that people deal with the cold and the different ways that people deal with the cold. Um, you see a lot of, like, uh, goose down parkas with fur hoods and big heavy moon boots and seven layers of wool pants. And I think that while those things are important to know about and some of that equipment is important to have, people are overreacting a lot. Um, you see right now I'm wearing regular pants, I'm wearing a wool sweater, and it's about 20 degrees out. Um, if you fly from South Africa in February where it's 110 degrees to Wisconsin where it's 20, yes, 20 is going to be miserable. But if you've been in Wisconsin since August when it was 100 degrees, to September when it was 80, to October where it was 50, to November where it was 40, and now we're into December where it's 20 and 30 degrees, you've had time to get used to it and your body acclimates to these ideas. Um, however, we are people who love to be outside. We like to go outside. We like to go snowshoeing and ice fishing and hunting and tracking and winter camping and backpacking and w whatever it is that you do outside in the winter we are people who love to be outside so i'm going to take some time here and i'm going to talk to you about 10 tips for surviving the winter in the wilderness and hopefully you can even be comfortable while we're doing it the things i want to talk about are the clothing that you wear and how you wear it i want to talk about your feet and how we keep your feet warm and healthy I want to talk about how you move and how your movement will affect your warmth. I want to talk about what you eat. I want to talk about how you sleep. I want to talk about the type of fire you have, the type of shelter, shelter you sleep in. I want to talk about where you sit or where you build your camp. These tips that will come to follow will help you survive any situation in the winter no matter where you are, how cold it is, they'll help you stay comfortable during your winter activities. And they'll give you some insight into how people who spend all of their time outside deal with the cold. Let's go take a look. You'll notice my big choppers that I've got here. These are one of my favorite possessions. My hands have gone from so cold I thought I was going to lose them to plenty warm in moments because of these mittens. The problem is, as you can see, I can't really do anything when I'm wearing them. Can't shoot a bow, can't shoot a rifle, can't crank a fishing rod. I can pull a sled, but that's about all I can do. So you know what I do? I wear a small pair of gloves under my mittens. If it's really, really cold out, I might wear a thin liner with a wool glove over that inside of the mitten. That way when I pull my hands out, my fingers are able to do things, but my hands are still warm. Let's get rid of these mittens. And I want to talk to you for a minute about a couple of things that you're not going to see. You're going to hear me mention this again, but often when it's very cold out, I will wear two pairs of socks. Um, it's important for keeping your feet dry and warm. But these... Notice how heavy these are. These are wool outer socks. I would never wear just these. They're too bulky. They're too heavy. It's not cold enough out right now, so I'm not wearing those. Another thing, when it's very, very cold out or very, very hot out, one of the worst fabrics you can wear is cotton. So you're not going to see a lot of cotton fabric here. You're not going to see me wear a lot of cotton. In the winter, it offers very little insulation and it lets a lot of air through. And in the summer, as you sweat, it gets very heavy and it holds water. However, for mid layers, I will often add cotton long sleeve t-shirts or short sleeve t-shirts, depending on how cold out it is. As we start getting into this, you'll see how much clothing I'm actually wearing. But if it were a little colder, I might throw something like this on. 
further, when I'm trudging through the woods, whether I'm snowshoeing or I'm pulling a sled or I'm carrying my ice fishing gear or I'm trying to find deer or I'm trying to build a shelter, my legs feel encumbered and I don't like that. So I try to wear as little on my bottoms as possible. I think what I have on right now is a pair of shorts, a pair of a base layer, long underwear, these wool pants. And then you'll notice my boots come up almost to my knee and my coat comes almost down to my knee. So my knee, my legs are really covered without wearing several layers. However, I always carry these with me. This is a fleece mid layer. So it goes over your base layer, but under your shell. These are very, very warm and I usually sleep in them, but I don't wear them when I'm moving around. Which brings me to my next point. When you're moving around, you want to wear as little clothing as possible. If you walk out of your home and you are uncomfortably cold but not dying, you're probably wearing the appropriate clothing for moving, for pulling your sled, for trudging through the woods, for building your shelter. What we don't want is to start sweating and get our base layers wet. You're going to hear me say this a hundred times. Water wicks away body heat 25 times faster than air. Sweat is water. When we start sweating, our base layers get wet and we get cold. So wear as little clothing as possible when you're moving and reserve your heavier layers for when you're sitting around camp, maybe sitting around the fire or getting ready to go to sleep at night. Now, it's about 10 degrees here, so I'm not that cold. So I'm going to start shedding some layers and really show you what I've got going on here. First, my gloves are going to come off. I don't like wearing gloves. I like to be able to work with my hands. I can't start a fire with gloves. I can't strike a ferro rod with gloves. I can't shoot a bow with gloves. I can't reel a fishing pole with gloves. So I don't put gloves on unless I really need to. Next, if I were going to start shedding layers for movement, the first thing I would lose is this big heavy anorak. So let's get rid of it. You may notice I'm not wearing a hat. I've mentioned several times that when you're moving around, you don't want to be sweating. Most of our body heat when we're standing escapes through our head. Heat rises when you're standing, your head's on top. Therefore, it stands to reason that's where most of our heat escapes. You will see that if I'm sitting in a deer stand or sitting around a hole in the ice, or I'm sitting around a campfire or in camp in the winter, I will often wear either like a neck gaiter or a stocking cap with a trapper or bomber hat over that to keep my head warm because once we're not moving then we want to keep in that body heat and having that two layers on our head will really keep in the body heat now it does it may not look to a lot of you like i'm wearing very much but this is how i normally dress when i'm outside in the winter regardless of weather because usually when I'm outside, I'm moving around. And like I said, I don't want to get overly heated. But you know what? Let's just say my core is getting overheated. Let's lose the vest. All right. Well, now let's say I'm chopping wood. I'm building my camp. I'm starting to get even more overheated. Let's lose the sweater. Maybe you can see where I'm going with this. I'm wearing multiple layers of clothing. That way I can moderate my own body heat by adding and removing layers based on my levels of activity and my level of comfort. But you know what? Chopping wood is really hot work and I'm starting to sweat. So let's lose another layer. I'm still not uncomfortable because I've been moving around. I've been setting up shelters. I've been starting fires. I've been collecting firewood. My body heat is up. I'm not sweating, but I'm also not cold. You can see I'm wearing Steger Mucklucks. Ugh. 
which are very, very warm. You will not get cold with these to the point where I often don't take my own advice about layering because the boots themselves are plenty warm. So you can see I've removed several layers and I'm still pretty heavily clothed to where I can even take off my wool pants. And I'm still comfortable. Now, underneath these long underwear, you will see a pair of shorts, but I'm not gonna go that far. This isn't that kind of a video. Let's move forward and see what the other nine tips are. Tip number two is gonna be about your feet. Keeping your feet warm and dry is in my opinion, one of the absolute most important aspects of both enjoying the outdoors in the winter and also staying alive and healthy in the outdoors in the winter. If your feet get wet or cold, you are going to be miserable, you're going to get sick. Frostbite is a real thing and it hurts badly. So here are my tips. First is how I have to do with your socks. Typically when I go out in the winter, I wear two pairs of socks. Something like this. This is a light merino wool. It's just like a normal daily wear sock. These are what I wear to work. These are what I wear in my normal daily life. And then on the outside of that, I'm gonna wear something like this. This is a very heavy wool sock and they're a size too big for me. I wear these on the outside of the thinner sock because most of the moisture that's gonna be happening is gonna be coming from your feet. It's gonna be coming from sweat. So if you carry two or three pairs of inner socks and throughout your day or your time, you stop, take off your boots, take off your outer socks, take off your inner socks, put on clean inner socks, put your outer socks back on, put your boots back on. Your feet are gonna stay dry and it's gonna help your feet stay warmer. Now, as far as the boots go, you can see I have three pairs here. These are all mine, I wear all three, and they all have different virtues and different values. Um, I have no affiliation with any of these companies. I'm just telling you what I like. These are my muck boots. I love these things. It took me a long time to buy them because they're expensive, and I couldn't see why anyone would pay a hundred plus dollars for a pair of rubber boots. But the fact of the matter is, since I got them, I'm super glad that I have them. Um, you can see, they come almost up to my knee. This soft rubber toe, when you're wearing these, kind of feels like you're wearing socks with traction, but it's insulated. These are only rated to, I think, 20 degrees above zero. So they're not great for super cold weather, but they're waterproof right up to here. I've had them in water well past the rubber up into this neoprene and I did not get wet. I wear these when I'm bow hunting. I wear these when I'm small game hunting. I wear them right up until it gets to, you know, 10 degrees out before I switch these out. I will also wear these when I'm ice fishing. I'll wear them out onto the ice. I drill the hole. When you drill a hole in the ice, as a lot of you might know, a bunch of water comes up. It's like a volcano. The water will get all over these, they get wet. Then once my holes are drilled, I'll switch to a different pair of boots and these will keep my feet dry. As we're getting down to the 10 degree-ish mark, I will switch to something like this. These are just a Sorrel Conquest. Um, I've had these, as you can tell, for several years. These sorrels are quite warm, but they're not waterproof. Really not even a little bit waterproof. You know, right up to here maybe you'll get water resistance, but as soon as you get to this toe, the Gore-Tex lets water right in. So if you're snow blowing your yard or you're taking your dog for a walk, a boot like this is probably gonna do you quite well. And for several years, they kept my feet warm while I was deer hunting. Which brings us up to what I wear the most in the winter. 
and that is these. These are my Steger Mucklucks. They have a very soft sole. It's again, it's kind of like wearing a sock with traction. They look giant. When you're wearing them, it looks like you're extra pair of felt insoles in case you need added warmth. You can see they're still wrapped in their original package. I've never felt the need to use these. Th this boot will keep you warm in any conditions you're likely to be in. The downside to these is that they're not waterproof at all. If you get even a little bit of moisture on these, the liners are gonna get wet. If the liners get wet, your feet are gonna get wet. And once your boot is saturated to the foot, you're done for. You're gonna get frostbite, you're gonna get hypothermia. So the takeaway here is keep your feet warm, keep your feet dry. I've, I have had cold feet while ice fishing, while deer hunting, while backpacking, while winter camping, and it's the most miserable aspect of the whole ordeal. In order to keep your feet warm and dry, my first suggestion is wear two pairs of socks, a lightweight base layer and a heavyweight outer layer. Throughout your outdoor experience, switch out the inner layer to keep your feet dry. Tip number two is have the appropriate equipment for your situation. If you're gonna be getting wet, you need waterproof boots. If it's 20 below, you need the appropriate boots. If you're just going to go out and shovel your driveway or take your dog for a walk, something you can slip in and out of is really all you need, but it'll keep your feet warm. Let's see what the next trick is. Tips three and four are going to kind of tie together, but we're going to count them as two separate ones because it's two separate topics. So tip number three, try not to sweat. You've probably all seen the TV show where the guy says, if you sweat, you die. If you're in a survival situation, that might be the fact, but in any situation that any of us are likely to end up in, the, the truth is you sweat, you're gonna be very uncomfortable. Once you sweat, you're wet. Water saps your body heat 25 times faster than cold air. If you sweat, your base layers get cold, the wind comes through, you're wet, you're going to get cold, you're going to get hypothermia. If you're in a survival situation or you're 20 miles into the boundary water, you could very well die. If you're ice fishing or you're deer hunting, it's gonna ruin your day. You want to try not to sweat. And part of that is what we talked about with um, working your layers. And part of it is what we talked about with changing your socks. The other part is gonna be to moderate your activity. In the summer, we can run and jump and climb trees and crawl through the muck all we want if we get overheated, we stop moving for a minute, we drink some water, we go back to our activity. In the winter, you need to moderate your activity to control your sweat. Because if you get sweaty, you are going to get cold, it is going to ruin your day. Tip four is move slowly. I said this was gonna kinda tie in with tip three, and it will, in that the more slowly you move, the more easily you can moderate your sweating. But there's more to it than that. In the winter, things are frozen. If you try to move quickly, you're going to slip, you're gonna fall. You don't wanna get hurt. Getting hurt when you're cold hurts worse than when you're warm. I don't know if any of you played football in high school. Getting hurt when you're cold hurts worse. So in the winter, if you move slowly, you're moderating your sweat, you're keeping yourself warm, you're stopping yourself from getting injured, Plus, and this is a much deeper subject, but anytime you're in the wild, you should be moving slower anyways. You're more likely to see animals, you're more likely to notice changes in the landscape, changes in the wind direction, and you're more likely to enjoy yourself. So tip number four is move slowly. Okay. Tip number five is cold conditioning. Very simply, cold conditioning means teaching your body to be comfortable in the cold. This is a really easy thing to do. You need to expose yourself to cold in a way that you would normally consider yourself underdressed. The things that I do are, I'll take my dog for a walk in just pants and a t-shirt, or I'll wear sandals while I'm driving my daughter to school. 
I go and I'll spend five to 10 minutes outside in shorts and a t-shirt when it's 10 or 15 or 20 degrees out to get my body used to being cold. Another simple way to do this is cold showers. Cold showers are terribly uncomfortable, but you can ease into it by taking your normal warm shower, washing up, washing your hair, whatever it is you do while you're in there and slowly reducing the temperature to the point where when your shower is done, there's no hot water running anymore. Let the cold water run on you for a few minutes, call it a day. It's super invigorating, it's really good for your blood flow, and it helps increase your brown fat stores while reducing your white fat stores. Anytime you're going to be outside, if you live in a place where it's cold, dress down. Let yourself feel the cold. This is nature this is our environment it's where we live if we can't be comfortable in it then we should probably be living somewhere else because for us this is over half the year it starts getting cold in october it stays cold till april or may we need to learn how to be comfortable in it and by conditioning ourselves to this cold it will help us be more comfortable when we are fully dressed while we're out enjoying our winter activities okay. tip number six is nutrition being outside in the winter is different than being outside in the summer. In the summer, we have a lot of freedom to kind of do whatever we want and our bodies will make up for our bad decision making through homeostasis. In the winter, we have to be cognizant of our surroundings and the dangers and we have to take actions to supersede those dangers. One of the things we need to do is A, make sure we're eating enough. If you haven't had breakfast or you didn't have dinner last night or you're you know, trying to skip meals, maybe don't go outside when it's 20 below. If you want to go outside and you wanna have the energy and be able to stay warm and healthy, you need to eat a lot and you need to eat high fat. Will Steger, who is one of my heroes, who I believe is the hero of everyone who is my age, uh, he is a man who walked across Antarctica. He dog sledded to the North Pole. He was an adventurer who, rumor has it, he lived on butter when he was doing those things. You eat sticks of butter. You eat foods that are super high in fat. Eat your steak. Eat your cheese. Eat your butter. Put cream in your coffee. When you put these fats in your body, <clears throat> your digestive system uses those fats as energy and forcing your body to thermoregulate burns more calories than running let me say that again forcing your body to keep itself warm burns more calories than running so if you're going to be outside when it's cold out you need to make sure you've eaten enough tip number seven is think like the animals it's not really think like the animals, it's wind blocks. But animals use these, the deer especially, so we should too. You may notice behind me, you can just see a sea of white or an expanse of white through these trees. That's the lake. We're on the east side of a lake in western Wisconsin, a place where we have prevailing winds from the west. So the winds come across this lake, they pick up speed because there's nothing to slow them down. And when they hit us, it gets pretty cold. You can have a day that's 20 or 30 degrees when you're out of the wind, but with zero degree wind chills or lower, depending on how fast it is. So if you can get into a place like this where there's kind of dense pine trees or even a dense like aspen thicket will cut that wind in a lot. So whether you're ice fishing, hunting, camping, hiking, anytime you're in the woods or in the wild when it's winter cold and you're not moving, it will be to your advantage to create or find some sort of a wind block. Dense pine trees will do it, other trees will do it, a piece of cardboard will do it, sitting next to your car if you're ice fishing. Anything you can do to cut that wind is gonna save you several degrees of temperature and it's gonna make you that much warmer. So the next thing I wanna to talk to you about is a trick uh, to stay warm around a fire. Um, have you ever noticed that when it's cold out and you're sitting around the fire, maybe you're making a s'more with your child or a cup of tea or something, 
your front half gets almost uncomfortably warm, but your back is cold. You know, you can, you know, switch your position. You put your back to the fire. But really, it's just hard to stay warm. I have a trick for you. Here's one really simple, really solid solution to that problem. We're going to make two fires. We're going to sit between these two fires. There's a couple of things here. You want to make sure they're far enough apart to where you can move around and change your sitting position without risking falling into one of these fires. The other is, as the day progresses towards night, if we're going to be sleeping here, we're going to want to make these fires big enough where when you're laying down, you don't have your shoulders and chest and head smoldering hot while your feet are freezing. You want to make these fires get larger. But you can see as it is right now, I've got, I'm warm on both sides here. I would say I'm warm all the way around even though I don't have fires front and back. Though I'll tell you, if it's 20 below and windy, make four fires. But I can sit like this. I can sit like this, still warm. I can even lay down. And you'll see I'm far enough from these fires that I'm not burning front or back, but I'm close enough that I'm warm. I'm actually pretty comfortable here. If one fire's not doing it, make another one. Make three, make four, as many as you need. When you're out in the wilderness, dead dry sticks on the ground are plenty common and they're very plentiful. If you need to have more than one fire, do it. Why be cold? Tip number nine is about sleep. And really, this tip only counts if you're camping or if you're gonna stay outside. But tip number nine, sleep. In the winter, nights are long, days are short, and it's much, much colder at night. You can have a day that's 20 or 30 degrees and a night that's 20 or 30 below. That's a kind of change that is gonna cause discomfort and it's gonna bring you closer to hypothermia. If you're gonna be camping or sleeping outside in the winter, it will be to your benefit to sleep more. Try, if you can, to go to sleep shortly after sunset and wake up with the sun. So we're talking 10 to 12 hours of sleep a night, which may sound ridiculous to some of you, but honestly, sleep is important. You should probably getting more of it anyways. If you want to stay warm, you want to avoid hypothermia, you want to stay healthy, and you want to enjoy your outdoor activity, when you're camping in the winter, sleep as much as you can. Get up, enjoy your fire, enjoy your coffee, enjoy your ice fishing, enjoy your hike or your snowshoeing trip, whatever it is you're gonna do, but make sure you're getting enough sleep. Sleep is when your body regenerates. Being in your sleeping bag will keep you warm. Make sure you're getting enough sleep. The last tip we're gonna talk about in this video is about shelter. Now again, this only counts if you're spending the night out, whether it's a planned night out or an accidental night out. Your shelter in a very cold weather situation needs to be reflective, both of your body heat and also of the heat from your fire. Right now, I'm gonna set up the Merkware Pocket Super Shelter, and I'm gonna show you how to use a small shelter like this, both with your body heat and also with a fire. But you can also use something as simple as a space blanket or uh, the SOL Emergency Bivy any of these types of things will work to reflect your body heat and the heat from a fire. Let's set this thing up.
So as you saw, it's pretty easy to set up. Um, I think it took me less than five minutes to set this thing up and I've never done it before. I think I wanna show you how to use this thing with a fire. So, stick around. I'm gonna use a ferro cerium rod to start this fire. I'm not gonna go into the whole process of how to do that, but if you'll check our previous video on ferro rod fire starting, you'll have all the details you need. All right, we've got our fire going. This is what's called a stick bundle fire lay. It's a super lazy way to start a fire, but under ideal conditions, it's really quick and easy. The problem comes when you don't have ideal conditions. Notice how I've built the fire about three feet from the shelter. That's on purpose. Anytime you're dealing with synthetic materials like mylar, you have a risk of fire. But we need this to keep us warm, so this three foot distance should be plenty to avoid any danger. I hope you've enjoyed our little experiment with reflective shelters. You can see this little fire. I'm feeling a fair amount of warmth from it. If we were to let this burn for a while, between my body heat reflecting off the mylar and that fire, I feel that I would be comfortable to sleep in this shelter overnight. If we had more time, we've only been here a couple hours, um, I could build a reflecting wall on the other side of the fire that would help get even more heat towards me. We'll review all 10 tips and then we'll talk about what you can do moving forward. Just a side note, this is my wool anorak. It's made from a wool blanket. It's all hand sewn by me. The pattern is made taking measurements off of my body. We do teach a class on this, but that only helps you if you're in the Twin Cities or Wisconsin. Um, However, if you like this, we're gonna be giving one away. Um, it's almost completed. It's a size men's double XL, but they're meant to be worn outside of all of your other clothing, so they should be big. I mean, look how big this one is on me. In a couple of weeks, we're gonna come out with a YouTube video that's gonna have a giveaway. Um, and we are going to give away one of these wool anoraks. So if you're interested in something like that, please keep your eyes open. I really hope you've enjoyed this video. I had a ton of fun making it. I also really hope you've learned something from it. Remember our 10 tips, dress in layers, keep your feet warm and dry, don't sweat, move slowly. Eat plenty of food and lots of fat. Get plenty of sleep. Look for wind blocks. Condition yourself to the cold. Stay and build in reflective shelters. And if one fire isn't doing it, build a second one or a third one or a fourth one. These tips will keep you alive, they'll keep you comfortable, and they'll keep you having fun during your outdoor activities in the winter. If you've learned anything from this video, if you found any value in it, please find a friend to share it with. If you love what we're doing or you hated this video, please tell us in the comments. I wanna know how you people are reacting and how you're thinking about what we're doing. My name is Blake with Northwinds Wilderness School. Thank you so much for your time. I appreciate every second of it and every single one of you. Have a great day.